The edit page in DaVinci Resolve has a ton of tools that will speed up your workflow and make the editing process just a lot smoother. And today we're gonna go over five of them. I've got a timeline set up in DaVinci Resolve, just a basic talking head timeline. Don't worry about those gaps at the end. We're gonna be filling those in later. For now, let's just get started with the tips. Our first one is scale full frame with crop. Let's take a look at our playback monitor right here. You'll notice that there are black lines on each side of the monitor. And they're just ugly. They're ruining the whole video. And the reason why this is happening is because I'm working in a 4K DCI timeline, but my footage resolution is 16 by nine. So what we're going to do is we're gonna come over into our media pool and we're gonna come over to our timeline and we're gonna right click. We're gonna go to timelines timeline settings, and down here where it says mismatched resolution, we're gonna change this to scale full frame with crop and click okay. And now you'll see we've zoomed in, we've cropped in a little bit, and now those ugly black bars are gone and our video looks very, very pretty again minus my weird little pause face here. All right, let's talk about editing with timecode, which is super, super handy if you know exactly where you need your playhead to be and you know exactly how many frames you need to move forward. Let's say you wanted to put a fade in in this video right in the beginning and you wanted that fade to end one second in, now you have a couple options here. You can just hit forward 24 times, so you move forward 24 frames, which in a 24 frames per second timeline, equals one second, or you can simply come up here to your time code, click on it, and just hit plus 100, and that, when you hit enter, will move you forward one second. If we scroll in, you can see that we've moved the playhead forward one second. Now, you don't just have to do one second. If we come back up here to the time code, click on it again, and we do plus 500 and hit enter, it's gonna move us forward five seconds. And then same thing for going backwards. If we just click on that time code one more time, let's say we wanted to go backwards two seconds, we just hit minus 200 and it'll bring us backwards two seconds. All right, let's talk about adding B-roll from the source monitor. Sometimes you wanna add B-roll into your timeline, but the clip that you have in your source monitor has both video and audio in it, and sometimes finding the right in and out points is just super, super annoying. So what we're gonna do is speed up that process by adding only the video from the source monitor and it being the exact right length. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So here in my timeline, I've added my screen recording to my source monitor. And like I said, I've got video and audio here, but I only want the video coming down into my source monitor or into my timeline rather. So what I wanna do first is I wanna navigate my playhead to where I want this screen recording to be, which is gonna be right about here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add an endpoint by hitting I on my keyboard and let's say I want that screen recording to end right about here. I can hit an out point. And next thing I wanna do is come down to my audio tracks here. And what I wanna do is turn my destination controls off. My destination control are these little red boxes around A1 and A2. We're just gonna go ahead and turn those off. And then we're gonna come up into our source monitor and we're gonna find exactly where we want our clip to start right there. Let's go ahead and hit I. And then all we're gonna do is hit F11. And what we did was we took that section of the A roll out and we replaced it with our screen recording. But let's say we didn't want that. Let's say we wanted that clip to actually be on a separate video track. Let's go ahead and move our playhead to another place where I want this B roll. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit I to set an in point. I'm gonna come over to the end of this clip. I'm gonna hit O to set an out point. I'm gonna come over to my source monitor. I'm gonna find another place for it to start. Let's go ahead and hit an I there. And then what we're gonna do is hit F12 and that'll place the clip on a separate track. So F11 will replace your footage with the clip from the source monitor and F12 will place the footage 
on top on a separate track. You just gotta make sure those destination controls are off so you don't bring in the audio from your source monitor. All right, moving on, let's go ahead and move our playhead down to one of these gaps. And what I wanna do is place some footage into this gap here. This is where I want some B-roll. So what we're going to do here is first go into our bin where our B-roll is, and we're gonna put this car chase in here. Let's go ahead and add that to our source monitor. And the next thing we wanna do is come down to our audio tracks once again, and we want to turn auto track selector off. So let's go ahead and turn that off on audio one turn that off on audio two, and then we're gonna come back into our timeline. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. We can place our playhead anywhere in this timeline. And if I just hit X, it's going to set an in and an out point only in that gap in the video. Next thing we wanna do is come into our source monitor. Once again, we're gonna figure out where exactly we want this clip to start. We're gonna start it right here. We're going to hit I to add an endpoint, And then what we're gonna do is hit F12. And we've placed that video clip in the gap. All right, let's go ahead and turn auto track selector back on because we've got one more issue that we need to fix here, which is that even putting this video in here, if we zoom out, we've got a ton of gaps here in this timeline. We wanna close those and we can do that with a click of a button. We just need to come up here to edit and come down and hit delete gaps. So there you go, five quick tips for the edit page to speed up your workflow. If you want a few more workflow hacks, click here. And for more tools, tips, and tricks that'll make you a better video editor, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.